I'm a professor of philosophy uh, at the Utrecht University of Budapest, uh, uh, interested in, in political philosophy, and that will be roughly the field uh, I'm going to talk about. And since I tortured many participants to, to keep time limits, I will try to, uh, to, to remain... To, to, to remain with, with <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, here, here, here is here's my, my, my clock for. So the, my title is Liberal Awakenings and uh, Realist uh, Lessons, and uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, realist lessons uh, uh, that should be drawn from, from the Ukrainian conflict, uh, uh, and uh, that uh, that means mainly some uh, considerations uh, in, in the field of internet, international relations. I would like to, to connect this uh uh, these considerations to a recent interest uh, in the idea of, uh, of empire or, or, or imperial structures, although uh, these have a very bad press nowadays uh, uh, in, in connection with, uh, with Russia. Uh, there, there's also uh, a point to make here. Uh, uh, after World War II, uh, there was observed uh, a changing concept of, uh, of the war, of war and military, uh, military conflicts. Uh, I'm going to, going to talk about uh, uh, this this very very briefly and uh, the main claim uh, will be that uh, there is a, a strategic attractivity of empire or imperial structures uh, in political philosophy and international uh, relations uh, and uh, a more concrete claim uh, is that uh, that Europe falsely overestimated the regulating force uh, force of commercial relations uh, and that would be uh, the liberal awakening in my title uh, I would like to to, uh, to discuss very briefly the idea of empire. It is uh, roughly uh, speaking uh, um, uh, as uh, a name for, for diverse, mostly uh, dynastically ruled uh, political units, which are typically multi-ethnic. Uh, the, perhaps the most essential feature of an empire is the center periphery structure, uh, which, which uh, easily corresponds to, to a barbarian discourse, meaning that uh, the those in the center uh, uh, have a tendency to uh, to regard uh, uh, those uh, both in the periphery and beyond the borders as as uh, as, be, as barbarian in uh, in some sense and therefore uh, easily. Um, <coughs> It's an easy conclusion, uh, therefore, in the need of, uh, uh, of civilization. Uh, that means that an imperial mission uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, very likely to appear in, uh, in imperial structures. Uh, we see it in the Roman Empire as well as in the United, uh, United States uh, manifest destiny and, uh, and such, uh, such uh, ideas. Uh, what, what is important for us uh, as a distinction or a contrast between uh, state, between empires and states, is uh, is a point that was uh, that was uh, addressed today uh, uh, by our first speaker: uh, uh, the difference of the borders. Uh, uh, imperial and state borders differ in that empires uh, generally don't recognize their neighbors as, as equals. Uh, uh, they uh, they uh, have a tendency to regard them. Uh, to, be, to be singular, uh, whereas uh, states uh, in the normal case uh, um, recognize their, their neighbors as, uh, as equal states with, uh, with, with an equal, uh, equal status. Uh, and uh, that means also uh, a different way of integrating uh, their population, uh, which, which is not, not very interesting for us today uh, of, uh, in, or in this context. Uh, uh, briefly, um, uh, it is the point that, that uh, states uh, have uh, have uh, the tendency to integrate their populations through giving equal rights to them, which is not, not uh, always typical of, uh, of empires. Now, um, uh, a too strong contrast of, uh, of states and um, uh, empires would be not so productive because uh, nowadays all the world uh, is politically ordered in, in states and therefore uh, formal empires um, either don't, don't uh, exist or, or they, they play no 
uh, no uh, uh, efficient role, uh, but we should uh, rather say that imperial structures uh, or 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 uh, empires in an informal sense overlap the order of states, uh, and uh, and that means that, uh, that they are sometimes uh, hard to uh, to to identify. Uh, we could also put it uh, <coughs> it um, uh, in the following way: uh, um, imperial structures or or empires uh, uh, appear rather. In, in the informal realm, uh, in, in the discourse or in the analysis of, uh, uh, of empires, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the terminology of informal empire as contrasted to, to formal empire uh, was, uh, uh, was present for, for a long time. Already Caesar uh, emphasized uh, that, that it is not, uh, not, not, the, not the formal uh, uh, limits of, uh, of Rome, uh, what, what count, uh, but, uh, uh, but, but, but the excess, but, but the power uh, um, room is, is able to uh, to exercise on others now what, what is the point of uh, of these uh, <clears throat> considerations why uh, why uh, it uh, why is it interesting uh, the <clears throat> the main reason for this is uh, the lack of stability in in the international order uh, since uh, uh, since the end of the world uh, <clears throat> since the end of the cold war uh, we can uh, we can claim that there is uh, no uh, successful overall state structure uh, which which could guarantee um, uh, a long term uh, stability in uh, in the international order uh, in concreto uh, or in particular there is no possibility to to enforce uh, decisions uh, uh, made uh, <coughs> Made by uh, by uh, uh, a group of states or or or, or uh, uh, the, most of the states, uh, and, and and it is uh, uh, the reason why uh, we could talk about uh, uh, the attractivity of uh, of an empire or empire like uh, uh, like entities because uh, it is uh, uh, it is. Uh, uh, Permanent feature of, of empires that they uh, they uh, seek to uh, to guarantee a sort of normality in uh, in their uh, their sphere of influence, uh, uh, meaning that uh, uh, that uh, uh, a certain uh, a certain uh, level of, of normal functioning and calculability appears uh, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, in the field uh, in the sphere of interest uh, and sphere of influence uh, of. Uh, of uh, uh, of a great power, if you want, or or, or, or an empire, and I think that uh, that, that this is uh, this is uh, uh, the most we can have in uh, in international uh, in in the international order, uh, and uh, and this is uh, roughly the <coughs> argument, the the, 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 mo the mo most important argument in favor of the attractivity of of, uh, of imperial uh, structures. Uh, it can be illustrated uh, in uh, by by process uh, uh, observed um, uh, not too far uh, ago um, by by two series uh, Mary Calder and uh, and Herfried Nuncler who who both uh, uh, described uh, the new type of uh, war uh, saying that military conflicts uh, after World War II became uh, rather low intensity uh, conflicts uh, between sub-state uh, parties uh, and uh, this process was <coughs> described by both uh, as a democratization of, of the war, uh, which replaces uh, uh, the, <coughs> the conventional, uh, or if you want, the Westphalian uh, system of war, uh, which, uh, which was uh, uh, definitely a conflict between states uh, who, 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 who had uh, uh, only the, the right to, to declare war to, uh, to, to one another. Uh, and this democratization of the war um, uh, depends uh, on, on technological uh, innovations uh, and, and also on, on an extension of, uh, uh, of potential, uh, uh, potential military actors uh, like uh, children, uh, children uh, soldiers, uh, and, and, so, and so on. Now, uh, the, the, the most, uh, most important uh, 
point about uh, this new kind of uh, wars is that uh, that they create uh, uh, a permanent or very long-lasting uh, uh, culture. Uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, crisis areas uh, uh, in uh, in various uh, uh, <coughs> various uh, territories in Asia, uh, Africa, and uh, Latin America. Uh, uh, if I remember well, in Nicaragua, um, uh, the the civil war uh, finished uh, some years ago after more than 50 years. It's a more, uh, uh, more, more more than half uh, for half of a. <coughs> Uh, a century, and uh, and, uh, and that means that uh, that in such uh, such regions, uh, um, I mean, uh, if if there is no uh, great power uh, or, or in uh, around, uh, then then there will be no no sort of normality, uh, and uh, also no uh, no calculability, which which would be an essential precondition for uh, for for frun functioning uh, economy, and it should also be noted that that great powers or empires if you want uh, usually uh, grant uh, certain common goods also for for free riders or or, or inferior allies uh, uh, which uh, which is uh, which is of course uh, uh, <clears throat> seldom uh, seldom uh, mentioned and uh, I um, I uh, close my considerations with, uh, with with open questions which uh, which were addressed uh, in previous talks uh, partly uh, the, the first uh, um, first uh, group of questions concern uh, uh, the problem uh, uh, if we want to uh, want to admit uh, um, the attractivity of empire or imperial structures. Uh, then the question arises: who will uh, who would uh, limit them? Who would uh, uh, who would uh, be able to force them uh, or to? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, to to uh, to request them to do uh, this or that, uh, and uh, the other group of problems is uh, uh, the the long term perspective uh, question whether whether is uh, whether it's a danger or hope. Uh, uh, I think the security problem could be partly solution. Um, could be partly, partly solved by these uh, by uh, the imperial structures, but the cooperation problem uh, is uh, uh, is uh, not so hope hopeful uh, with regard to to the uh, to such entities which tend to be uh, selfish uh, and and so on. Uh, um, that was uh, my uh, <clears throat> contribution. Thank you for your uh, attention. <clears throat>